In 1990, a remarkable material was demonstrated on BBC's Tomorrow's World. I'm going to leave this torch blowing on this egg for a couple of minutes, and it ought to survive the inferno because it's coated with a remarkable new plastic. The substance appeared to have incredible heat-resistant properties. The egg hasn't even begun to start cooking. Its apparent uses were countless. Big industry were clamouring to discover more about this wonder product. The material, christened Starlight, was all the more miraculous as its creator, Morris Ward, a ladies hairdresser from Hartlepool, had no formal chemical training. Despite huge interest from NASA, Boeing and the Ministry of Defence, Morris never made the millions he hoped for, and in 2011 he died with the product never fulfilling its potential. But did Starlight's secrets die with him? Was Starlight nothing more than an intriguing party trick? Or could this apparently incredible material still save countless lives? It's incredible that this material just painted on could be so powerful. The test that I in fact did indicated that it was better than in fact anything else that I'd in fact seen. It stumbled on a wonderful invention. It wasn't through being a sophisticated scientist. Morris and Starlight first came to my attention back in June 2010. He phoned me up out of the blue, saying he had a solution to the BP oil crisis in the Gulf of Mexico. I was a rookie reporter at the time covering local issues, but there was something about Morris and his story that really grabbed me. Intrigued, I set off to meet him to find out more. I'm just an inventor that uh plays around and I do it quite different to the normal sort of person. That product was Starlight, a material that looks and feels like a combination of metal and plastic and, says its creator, can withstand 75 nuclear blasts. We did it with an egg on Tomorrow's World. Although it looked red hot, he could pick it up with his bare hands and that, of course, created a great, a great deal of interest right around the world. That would be my sole encounter with Morris and his self-professed miracle material. But who was this mysterious figure and how did he come to discover Starlight? Tell us about Morris then, your dad, what was he like? And a very eccentric man, liked his own way, had a mind of his own and nobody could tell him. Well, Morris was a, um, of course, was a very elegant looking chap. White hair, white beard turned out nicely. I was very fond of Morris. He had a complicated character which was engaging to people like me. To some extent he was an otherworldly sort of character. A lot of people didn't get on with him because I think the way he was. Morris wasn't in any way your typical scientist. That's what made him interesting but it also made it frustrating dealing with him. He started off in hairdress and he was very successful. And while he was doing hairdressing, he used to make his own wigs. And because he used to do all the fibres for the hair, I think this is where the scientist stuff came in. The worst British air disaster for 13 years. 54 people are killed at Manchester Airport, trapped in a burning plane. There was a big aviation disaster in Manchester. A lot of people were killed and people died from fumes, not from the fire itself. And so Morris was trying to come up with a product which would deal with that. Um, he was burning rubbish in his back garden and he happened to in fact notice that part of it didn't burn. It just did not burn. So he tried to use um, oxygas torches and it still didn't burn. So Morris essentially discovered starlight completely by accident. He discovered a potential version of it completely by accident, yes. What Starlight looked like to me was like nothing. It was nothing. You could use this paste to treat cardboard and you could then focus a, an oxyacetylene torch on it so it would be glowing red, orange, and you could put your finger right up to the back of the cardboard and your finger didn't get burnt. 